Uh, hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is October 19th, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, today we have myself and Bernova Rockman. Uh, Mark's not here today. He's at DevOps World Tour giving his fantastic talk along with all the other participants and speakers. So uh, we'll, we'll be sure to get some uh, insights into everything next week when Mark's back. But uh, for today, we'll go over the agenda and take things from there. Uh, on the agenda, so we've got Google Summer of Code. It's completed. Just some quick updates. We've been discussing this previously, so we won't spend too much time on that. Uh, the prototype JS removal from Jenkins, which appeared in uh, one of the most recent weeklies, and how that's going to be affecting uh, the LTSs going forward. Uh, Oktoberfest 2023 stats, since we've had a week now, uh, we've got new numbers to report there. Uh, the documentation update for the Debian packaging site. Uh, so that's um, pertaining to a pull request that we've discussed recently in Docs Office Hours, as of like a couple of weeks ago, I want to say. Um, but just something small that we've made those changes. Uh, the Jenkins Governance Board and officer elections are are, are uh, going on now. So just a quick update on that. Uh, September newsletter was published. Uh, we have the Java 11, 17, and 21 uh, discussion uh, and uh, an actual Jenkins enhancement proposal to look at nowadays, which is great. Uh, the update CLI discussion that we started last week, uh, the process of choosing a plugin bomb, which yeah, have not had any progress since then. So I'm just gonna remove this uh, for the time being. Uh, and then housekeeping. Uh, so Docs Office Hours Asia is uh, canceled for today since Mark's at DevOps World. Uh, I don't, uh, there was talk about next week. I can't remember if that is as certain. Um, Me neither. <laughs> but yeah, well, but we can figure that out in due time. Anything else on the agenda, Bruno, or for the no, agenda? Thank, no, that's okay. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, Google Summer of Code, so we've discussed this previously. Uh, Google Summer of Code has completed now. All four projects were completed successfully. Uh, there are There's still some additional work to deploy these projects, but they've completed. And again, we appreciate all of the work that every single participant uh, put in for this. Uh, really fantastic. Uh, as far as the version documentation for Jenkins.io, Chris has been working on that with Fadit. Uh, Chris has started the conversation with the Infra team to figure out what we need to do next for uh, deployment and preparation to get that uh, ready to go. Um, there are some notes that we've uh, put down here about some of those steps, and uh, we do have the demo site that Chris has. So the version documentation for Jenkins.io, I believe this link. Uh, no, it's this one, the prototype site. That makes more sense. Um, but yeah, so uh, really nice, really great. It's got the 2.401.3. Uh, so it's a little behind, but that's okay. This is just mock-up. So uh, yeah, looking really good. Really excited to see that. And in due time, we'll have some more information when they are ready to be launched. Uh, we discussed this. Oh, sorry, Bruno, did you, have, did you have something? Or is that just... Uh... Oh, thanks for okay. asking, uh, Kevin. Uh, but no, I haven't been able to progress on um, my uh, project with Ashutosh in order to oh. host it within the Jenkins CI or, or Infra organization. So um, it was okay not to talk about that. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, sorry, I, I think I just heard something on your side and thought you was uh, wanting to speak up and I didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, thank you. Cool. Moving on. Prototype uh, has been removed from Jenkins as of the weekly 2.426. Um, so this is a concerted effort by a ton of contributors, um, especially thanks to Basil for writing the blog post and getting the ball rolling on this. Um, he's written this up to explain the process, and he had a previous blog post that was published back in May explaining the why and how behind this process. Um, so thanks to him and all of the uh, contributors that helped with this removal. Uh, again, none of this is possible without the help of the community. Uh, and this will be implemented in the November LTS. So uh, on that note, 2.426 has been the cho choice or is the choice for the next LTS baseline. Uh, and the 0.1 version will be released on November 15th, 2023. Uh, up next, we have Hacktoberfest 2023. So uh, again, just stats to report from this week. Uh, Jean-Marc Massin has been doing a great job of providing this information. Uh, so we double, it looks like we almost doubled as far as total number of PRs, uh, added a bunch of total Hacktoberfest PRs and a bunch of validated Hacktoberfest PRs. 
and increased our contributor count, which is great. Um, you know, seeing more people participate is exactly what we want. And seeing those numbers, uh, you know, steadily increase over time is beautiful. Um, the spam rate's much lower than previous years, even though it is still there. Uh, and the overall contribution rate has been a little bit lower, but this is a sentiment that seems to be across multiple projects. So it's not just Jenkins in this case. Um, who knows what that could be the cause from, but uh, you know, we are getting a lot of participation and we're happy with uh, everything that's come out so far. So thank you very much and continue and keep it up. Uh, the documentation update for Debian packages. So again, this was in reference to a pull request that we've looked at uh, previously. So this is uh, the idea of updating the instructions to use wget instead of curl. Uh, the user in, in, uh, stated that they didn't have curl installed. So this was a really uh, tough process to follow for them. Their suggestion is one that makes it appear more universal and uh, more commonly used. So uh, we've gone ahead and updated this. And thanks to Damien DePortal for uh, backporting the documentation change as well to the LTS page. Uh, so now the packaging site uses this uh, set of commands as opposed to the curl commands that were there previously. Uh, so thanks very much to uh, the user, who, the contributor who submitted that. And um, yeah, appreciate that. Generated a lot of good discussion and we've got things updated. Uh, next up is the Jenkins Governance Board and Officer Elections for 2023. So uh, the election process is full, in full swing. Uh, voter registration is open. Uh, it's open until November 5th. So plenty of time to register for that. Uh, there is a, a specific voter registration group to join as well. Um, this guy here. Uh, so as you can see, this would say join if you're not already a member. Mine says leave, which I'm not going to do. Um, but yeah, uh, and thanks to Alexander Brandes and Uri Hafner for running the elections this year. Uh, lots of work goes into that and just really appreciate the efforts that they're doing uh, in keeping this rolling. Yep, and we uh, still have a few days if you want, sorry to interrupt, if we want to uh, nominate someone for, um, yeah, and you can even nominate yourself if you feel like so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, we have another week. A nomination period does close on October 27th. Uh, and right now, while we do have one nominee for each uh, open seat, uh, it's not necessarily an election if we don't have multiple candidates to vote for. So uh, yeah. if if you have any ideas, if there's anyone that you have on mind that you'd like to nominate, please feel free. Uh, the, uh, the process is outlined in the uh, blog post that uh, Alex Brandes had submitted recently and we published uh, back in, uh, in September. So uh, check that out for any further information that you might need. Uh, and if it comes down to uh, we don't get further nominations, it may mirror last year's election where we did not have a vote um, because there was only one nominee for each position. Uh, there was no uh, need to have that vote. So if we are lacking nominations, that could be a very uh, familiar place that we're in this year. Uh, the September newsletter was published uh, just, um, yeah, last week, end of last week. Yep. Yeah, uh, this day, actually last Thursday. So yeah. uh, typical updates, information about voting and infrastructure updates, pla all the platform updates. Thank you to Bruno and everyone else, uh, all the platform SIG uh, or all the SIG leaders for submitting their uh, updates. As always, it's great to have this pulse on the community. Uh, next up, so the ongoing Java discussion that we've been having. So uh, previously, when we last uh, met, we had not, we did not have a Jenkins enhancement proposal submitted. Uh, Mark has gone and submitted that. So we now have the official uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan for Jenkins in a JEP. Uh, this also includes all the existing documentation that we've been sharing and looking at over the last few weeks. So the Google Doc, the diagram that shows the timeframes, and um, even the recording of the governance board discussing this. So uh, even further resources are here. Uh, and yeah, the generate the discussion is being generated, which is really nice. Uh, people are commenting and this is moving. Uh, so this is fantastic, great to see. And uh, now that we have the JEP, we can have all of those conversations and discussions here uh, in one place for uh, not only ease, but also just to keep everything organized. 
Uh, and the overall idea, as we've discussed before, is that the support for Java would be two years of the current one with uh, introducing the next one for that same two years. The next two years, the previous one would fall off. The next version would become the required version. And then uh, the next version after that would be in the preview. Uh, and then two years after that, we're dropping and moving and so forth and so on. So basically, uh, we get on this cadence of every two years, we're moving forward and going to the next step. Uh, this gets us in line with uh, all the other project platforms out there as far as their supporting for all these goes, um, especially stuff like Java 11, which will be end of life next year. So um, as part of the ongoing discussion and the ongoing work to get Java 21 into Jenkins, which we do now. Uh, Java uh, will have a blog post that'll be coming up discussing a lot more of this in depth, uh, but also sharing kind of what those plans look like uh, as far as we've got them figured out now. So uh, more to come on that, uh, but this is fantastic. And now that we have a Jeff, we have some place that we can uh, contain all these conversations and all this information. So thank you very, very much to Mark for again for doing that. Uh, this is fantastic. Yeah. His draft was already interesting in itself. His proposal is really interesting. And this discussion is uh, much better because I couldn't see much traction on the draft. You know, people are saying, oh, yes, no, whatever. And now people are uh, giving their opinion on what they think about it. I, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, even with the schema, I, was, I still have some trouble wrapping my head around that. but. It will come, you know, a few months ago, we were um, still with GDK 8 and now moving to 21. Uh, this is accelerating and that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's gearing up really fast now that you mentioned it, Bruno. I hadn't really considered that, you know, we just got rid of Java 8 and now we're already talking Java 21. It's such a drastic mm. leap. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's you're absolutely spot on. It's really great that we have everything in one place and it may not make sense right now, but there's so much time uh, before we even get to that point. So uh, plenty of time to understand. How, and I think uh, from my perspective, having the Google Doc is one thing because it's a Google Doc, you can read through it. Um, it doesn't necessarily provide a conversation space like that, though, whereas the the Jeff mm -hmm. definitely has that. You can Anyone can comment, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I think it's it's one thing to have the Google Doc and the diagram and the, the hypotheticals so that we can discuss, but now it's uh, you know it's it's real so to speak. It's there's a it's a hard and fast place people can go to actually reference this and talk about it and point to things and stuff. So um, I think it's just something that'll come along naturally with time, frankly. But yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, next up, so the update CLI discussion. Uh, so, one one more, yeah. Uh, shameless <laughs> plug once more. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, this has been a recurring subject, you know, using update CLI to keep Jenkins.io up to date. And uh, which one then? Nothing. Okay, uh, I have another one, which is uh, a follow up to this one. But yes, I'm had a first iteration where I was updating, I thought, all the references to Jenkins LTS versions in the documentation. And then uh, very boldly, uh, I removed a Ruby script that was taking care of a few pages to generate the versions uh, for the documentation. And of course, it failed. In the end, we had some horrible thing like placeholder later splits showing up in the official documentation. Ooh, ooh, my bad. So uh, this um, pull request is uh, an attempt to correct that. Uh, so I propose to use update CLI to uh, address those funky versions that are referenced to in some obscure part of the documentation. As for example, the last Jenkins version split, that means that when the last time we uh, extracted a code from the Jenkins core and made it into a plugin. So that's not a Jenkins version you often reference to, but it does exist in the documentation. So uh, the, to me, the added value of this PR is that we'll have um, history, a change log of what happened within the documentation. Because with a Ruby script, every time you merge a pull request, um, could be on any subject, but on Jenkins.io, well, 
the version could be updated and you wouldn't even know about that. You, it's part of the end generated website, but the GitHub repo doesn't know about that. So the added value for me is that a change log, a history of what happened with those versions. And I think it goes well with uh, Vandit's attempt to recreate version um, Jenkins.io. And today I made another PR, but uh, it will make only sense once this one gets merged, if that ever happens. Uh, because um, the thing is, I have one update CLI manifest that tracks and updates Jenkins LTS versions, Jenkins weekly versions, but also BOM, BOM versions, the plugin bill of material. And the frequency they get updated is not the same. Each time you get a new LTS, you don't get a BOM version. Each time you get a new BOM version, you don't get a new LTS. So I made them into, stupidly, I made them into the same update CLI manifest. And that was an error. Um, update CLI generated this week a PR that was about the title was um, update uh, the Jenkins LTS version to 2.414.2 in various parts of the documentation and the content, the modified files were about modifying BOM versions. So that does not work. And Mark Waits uh, spotted that a, okay, the content is good, uh, but the title uh, is misleading. That's not what we're doing. So the next uh, PR I made today is about splitting uh, the manifest into two, one dealing with BOM versions and one dealing with uh, Jenkins LTS weekly and split versions. Oh, that was a long explanation. Sorry for that. <laughs> no, no apologies needed. Thank you very much for clarifying and for sharing all that insight. I know that helps paint that picture a lot better. Um, and I think that's great that we'd have a change log of things that aren't necessarily, like you said, uh, normally documented or anything that's like found or, or easily accessible. Um, things that we don't have logs for at this point in time, uh, you know, having that insight is huge and makes, you know, yeah. makes our lives easier. If something happens, if something gets changed incorrectly or something, you know, we can look at a specific point in time and a specific action and who it was taken and like figure that out. So um, I think that's great. And I, and I think like um, as far as, you know, this, the, the actions that it's taking and going through and updating everything. Um, yeah. I can, I can definitely see where having everything in one, action would be a little confusing for it um, yeah. <laughs> but the fact that it's doing it and it's doing it successfully i might add uh is great and really encouraging so i'm all for it and i think that having something that would allow us to track those changes and track that sort of information would be in, like really valuable well thank you kevin yeah of course um what was it what was your inspiration for this bruno by the way Inspiration? What, like, uh, oh, yeah, I was just curious. Like, I know, because I know you've been uh, advocating for the update CLI stuff since you started oh, making uh, these. Yeah, it's, I was curious. Yeah. It's a kind of uh, love and hate relationship with update CLI because sometimes it's doing wonder for me and I do love it. And sometimes I just scratch my head and can't wrap my head up uh, around uh, the whole concept of update CLI. There is some magic in it. Um, but the thing that started it all is that I was frustrated. Um, I tried to maintain a few plugins and update them thanks to the fantastic tutorial of Mark and Darren, I guess. Uh, but there is some inconsistency in that tutorial because sometimes we will refer as uh, Jenkins uh, 401.3 version and later on we refer to 2.387.3 something not correct and it's because it's human maintained and i just thought to myself we can't continue like that we have to automate something because it's a burden for the person who's in charge of maintaining that and it's not always up to date and it's misleading for the end users yeah no, that makes total sense that yeah that's beautiful thank you very much um, that's, yeah, that's very community forward and, and really, uh, yeah, just very much appreciated, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, great. Um, so last item on the agenda is just to, again, share that Docs Office Hours Asia is canceled for this evening, today, tonight, whatever it might be. 
Um, Mark is at DevOps World Tour and would is not able to make it. Um, I want to say that he is out of office in the next week or the week after, but uh, mm -hmm. I could be making things up and I don't want to lie. So uh, Docs Office Hours Asia will be determined soon. Yeah, it will happen when after. it will happen. <laughs> Stay <Exactly>. tuned. <laughs> That's all I have at this point. I don't. I don't know for sure, but yeah, no. Um, so yeah, that covers the agenda that we have for the day. Um, if there is nothing else to discuss or anything else that anyone wants to put on there, uh, we'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a second. It'll be available in twenty four to forty eight hours. Uh, and as always, thanks for joining. Take care. Stay safe until. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>